on July 4th, we will celebrate the most important holiday of, the cal of our American history. For it was on July 4th, 1776, <clears throat> that 56 men, some were farmers, some were statesmen, some were lawyers, signed the Declaration of Independence on behalf of those that were part of the 13 colonies to declare their freedom from the oppression of England. It cost them a very dear price. But God was in this for the British were defeated and America was established as a sovereign nation. For 224 years, <clears throat> This nation has experienced freedoms like no other nation has. Yet with all the freedoms that we have been granted, that have been granted to us by our sovereign Lord of heaven and of earth, <clears throat> the power to govern us, the political power, a democratic form of government, with all these freedoms under that form of government, yet we are under the greatest tyranny of all, sin. We dignify what God condemns. Our God is our belly. Our glory is our shame. And we revel in the basest of human depravity. For a major city to name a street after the founder of Playboy, which is sheer pornography, is indicative of the slavery of sin that prevails over this nation. What awful slavery. Jesus said to the Pharisees of his day, who claimed to be in bondage to no man, he said, verily, verily, and those two words speak of the most profound importance. Listen to this statement that Jesus gave to the Pharisees of his day. He said, I say unto you, whosoever committeth, that word committeth means to be continually practicing sin, is a servant, is a slave of sin. In other words, sin has become the master, the tyrant, by which that individual lives. And <clears throat> America as a nation has certainly been a slave, subservient to that word which we call sin, which is lawlessness against God, our Creator. And so it seemed well at this time of year to speak about freedom, not physical freedom. Even though we enjoy physical freedom, political freedom for whatever years that we <clears throat> dwell upon the earth, how dreadful to think about a prison that we can never escape from, the eternal prison of hell for all who will be slaves to sin in time will be prisoners forever in that eternal habitation called hell from which there is no escape. And so I thought it would be well to talk about true freedom. This is the voice of broadcast coming your way, and I'm your host, Paul Fry. In Psalm 53, verses 2 and 3, we read these words, or hear these words. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek after God. But there was none. All have become filthy. All have gone aside. There was none that doeth good, no, not one. Then Isaiah, 700 years before he would come, Prophetically, it was written of the one who would come to set sinners free, the Lord of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Listen to these words from Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to open the prison of them that are bound, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the time came that he would dwell upon the earth 700 years later. And on an occasion, he had started his earthly ministry. He had been tempted of Satan in the wilderness for 40 days and nights. And then he had done a teaching and preaching ministry. He had set up his headquarters, <clears throat> his base of operations in Capernaum. And now he makes a journey to his hometown of Nazareth. And we'll pick it up in the 16th verse. Listen to these words. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, from which I just quoted from. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You'll take notice the words are not exactly the same. Our Lord, who is the word, paraphrased it to give us better understanding. And then he writes, and then this follows, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. From that verse, verse 18, which fulfills a prophecy of Isaiah 61, 1, I'd like to share with you about this meaning of true freedom. Notice the proclamation of good news. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, this proclamation of good news was hurled at his birth. For in Luke chapter 2, it says that to the shepherds who were fearful when they saw the curtain of heaven drawn back and the angels appearing, the angels said, Fear not, for behold, we bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And here he is now in Nazareth, in the synagogue, he is repeating those words that the prophet Isaiah gave. And notice that it was to certain people, not, notice, to the poor. And that's what I want to talk with you about today. In Isaiah 61, they're called the meek. Here they are called the poor. Now, who are the poor? Those who are not too proud to give to God credit for all the daily benefits of life, remembering that it is the grace of God undeserved that these benefits are given. We have come so proud in our defiance of God the Creator that we take these things for granted, forgetting that in Him we live and move and have our being. I think it's time that we begin to be thankful for the water that we drink the food that we eat, the very air that we breathe. And then secondly, there are those who are humble and meek and realize their spiritual poverty. There's been a void in their life. They realize that nothing this world could satisfy. There's an emptiness. There was nothing in them that could commend them to God. They realize their spiritual poverty. And it's interesting that in the great Sermon on the Mount, the first beatitude our Lord preached was, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. There are those who desire true righteousness, not their self-righteousness, but true righteousness, the righteousness that only Christ can give to a sinner. They desire true righteousness and riches that endure, not the riches that come from the stock market or the lottery or lawsuits of every ilk and kind 
or every other means, covetousness, whatever means, now they want riches that endure, eternal riches. And let me tell you, dear friends, the riches of this world can never buy eternal riches. Only Christ, who came to save sinners and set them free, can give you eternal riches, the riches of eternal life, a new home in heaven, and the presence, His presence, as we live here on earth. Those, the riches of peace, the riches of joy, the riches of love, being right with God, our Creator. Those are eternal riches. And secondly, notice he says, not only to preach the gospel to the poor, but to heal the brokenhearted. Let's think about that. Brokenhearted over the loss of a loved one? No. Brokenhearted over the work of sin in their lives. For you see, they begin to realize the consequence and the effect of sin in their lives, what it has done to them. What it is, is the work of the devil. For in 1 John 4, 8, we read that for this purpose, Jesus came into the world to destroy the works of the devil. And the works of the devil are seen in every one of us. And he came to set us free from that. Those who have been the misery of sin, the troubled conscience, the troubled conscience, no peace, like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, who cast up, uh, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. And then it's uh, the, the brokenness over sin that gives to them a broken and a contrite spirit, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Where they realize that they have defied and offended God the Creator who has given them richly all things to enjoy. And now they come willing to be ruled by the one who came to heal, to heal the wounds of sin. In Matthew 11, 5, it speaks about when he walked upon the earth, it says that he opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to walk. He cleansed the leper of his leprosy. He opened the ears of the deaf. And he raised the dead to life again. What he did physically is a picture of what he does spiritually. Spiritually. Spiritual death to spiritual life. From a spiritual cripple to the spiritual who has been made, to, to, to one who has been made whole. Uh, to, from uh, blinded spiritually to, blind, uh, to, to sight. We're able to see spiritually from deafness, deafness that we can hear spiritual things to embrace spiritual things. See, all those pictures of his physical healing are a picture of what he does in healing the soul. And then notice the next phrase goes like this. To preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance for the captives from the burden of sin, from the bondage to sin. Free, we don't have to sin anymore. We're free. Why? Because we have his power. We have his spirit. And then free from Satan's power. You see, in the Isaiah 61, 1, it speaks about to open the prison of them that are bound. For we are in Satan's prison until Jesus sets us free. That's why the tyranny of sin reigns over us. Because we're under the prince of the dark and the prince of darkness were under his reign, under his power. And then, deliverance from the curse of the law. You see, those who, haven't, those who have not fulfilled the law are under the curse of the law, and none of us have fulfilled the law. We're all under its curse. But then verse 13 of Galatians 3 says this, But Christ, to, who came to deliver us, delivered us from, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. You see, he fulfilled the law. And then he was made a curse for us to redeem us from the curse of the law, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth upon a tree. And then notice, as we go on in this verse, the recovery of sight to the blind. 
when we have when a man has been in prison for a long time he loses physical eyesight I remember the testimony of a man from China a Christian he was put in solitary confinement because of his faith he was in so long that when he came out he didn't have any sight well when we have been in the prison house Satan's prison house and captive to sin we don't have any spiritual eyesight but the recovering of that sight is that Jesus give us, gives us spiritual eyesight by his spirit remember that uh, one stanza in Amazing Grace once I was blind and now I see that's a picture of what Jesus does to the sinner that he saves in recovering their sight the things that he once hated now he loves for he now sees the unseen world he sees now a picture of glory that God has for those who love him and then <clears throat> Also, as we think of that uh, dispelling the darkness, we're reminded of Jesus as the light of the world. In Proverbs 4.19, we see those that are in spiritual darkness. They know not what they stumble. And then again, as I, nine, Isaiah 9.2, it speaks of those who <clears throat> um, sat in darkness. It speaks of those who were under the shadow of death. But he said upon them, the light has shined. And when the light of God's word shines into our heart to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, oh, what beauty it is to see the light. Being blinded all that time, but now we're seeing the light of true riches. And Jesus is the light of the world. He gives light to those who come to him. And those who follow him do not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And then <clears throat> we also think, of that verse in Ephesians 5, 8 says, where well, one time we were darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. We're to walk as children of light. And again, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, it speaks about, but we, brethren, the church of Thessalonica, Paul writing to them says, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day, the day of judgment, should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the day, nor of darkness. How wonderful to walk in the light and not in the darkness. And then notice it says here in the last part of that verse, it says, to set at liberty them that are bruised. That's liberty from the yoke of sin, liberty from <clears throat> the power of Satan, liberty, liberty. Oh, the fulfillment of that prophecy is found in Leviticus 25, 10. 10. Proclaim liberty throughout the land and all the inhabitants thereof that have been set free from <clears throat> their uh, indenture because they had lost their lands because of debt. But now this was to proclaim liberty throughout the land. It's a picture of those who have found liberty in Jesus Christ. And then <clears throat> Isaiah 42, 7 speaks to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners out from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. How wonderful to be free from Satan's power. How wonderful to be free from the yoke of sin that has enslaved us and has snared us and been our tyrant all these years. That's true freedom. And that's the freedom that the Lord Jesus Christ came to give to sinners like me. Now I would add one other phrase. Oh, happy condition of those whose souls have been set free. Psalm 89, 15 says, Blessed be the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. That is true freedom, dear ones. The world cannot give you. Oh, they can make you feel free. The world can make, can make you feel free to enjoy the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eye, and the pride of life. But that is true tyranny. That's enslavement. That takes away the dignity of man that God created in man when he created him. And then notice the last part, it says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? It is just this. It is those who are guilty of offenses against God the Creator may now be reconciled to God through the Savior. You see, the scepter of pardon is now extended to those who hear the gospel and respond. And for those who have been set free, I would like to quote a, ver a part of a verse from the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which was written during the Civil War. 
It goes like this. As Christ died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. Well, this was written many, many years after the Apostle Paul. But I want you to hear the words of the Apostle Paul, who was the chief of sinners. He was the chief of sinners. But one day he met the Lord on the road to Damascus. And from that time on, he was a free man to live as God intended him to live and to bear the good news of the gospel, that the gospel was given, the power of the, there's power in the gospel to set men free. Now listen to his words in Acts 20, 24. When we, our soul has been set free, then indeed we become the target of the enemy. And the apostle Paul had completed three missionary journeys. And now he was going back to Jerusalem and he knew many trials awaited him, and he knew many bonds awaited him. But listen to what he said. None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course and testify of the gospel which I received of the Lord, to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. He would say later, I suffer all things for the elect's sake, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and have an inheritance among the saints of God that are sanctified by faith in Jesus. Dear one, how is it with your soul? If you have been set free, if you have true freedom, you too will proclaim this message this gospel message of freedom to others that they too may be delivered from the tyranny of sin and from the power of Satan. Paul was commissioned to go to the Gentiles who were in heathen darkness. And this is the word that the Lord gave to him through the gospel. Turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan on to God that they too may receive forgiveness of sins, that they too may be set free that they too may be, have an inheritance among the saints that are sanctified by faith in the one who came to heal the brokenhearted, in the one who came to preach good news to the poor, in the one who came to set the captive free, in the one who came to set at liberty those who have come to Jesus. How is it with you, my dear friends? How is it with you? Do you count your life dear unto yourself? Are you steadfast regardless of the opposition that you face? If people revile you because you have found freedom in Jesus Christ and you want to share the gospel that will set them free too, when men revile you, do you turn aside? Or are you like the Apostle Paul, none of these things move me? You're steadfast, just like the Lord was steadfast when he set his face to Jerusalem when his hour had arrived to give his life a ransom for many. And what about you? Have you learned what it means about self-denial? Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me. The Apostle Paul would say <clears throat> he counted not his life dear unto himself. Why? Because for him to live is Christ. See, when you have true freedom, that is the freedom. To live is Christ, the one who has given us freedom. And to die is gain. For to die means to be with him forever. And then the next part is, to, he said, to finish my course. This is taken from Acts 20, 24. For those who have found true freedom, then we should be like the Apostle Paul. And the, these are the words that he's saying. To finish his course. Each one of us, when the Lord sets it free, has given us a job to do. And like the Apostle Paul, he wanted to finish that job. And so are all those who have been set free in Christ. We live in a wonderful land, America. As I said before, we have known freedoms like no other people have. And at the beginning of the program, I mentioned that we have become slaves to the greatest tyrant of all, sin. And the author of sin is Satan. We're in his prison. But let me tell you, dear ones, you can know true freedom by coming to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. We thank you for your interest in the ministry of the Voice of Truth. 
feel free to call us. Our telephone number is at the bottom of your screen, 718-428-1082, or write Post Office Box 1376, Manhasset, New York, 11030. We're here to pray with you. We're here to counsel you if you have that need. But to serve, free to serve, oh, what a privilege it is. And may you know the true freedom that only Christ can give. God bless you till we meet again. Um, when I stand in glory, I will see His face. And there I'll serve my King forever in that holy place. My heart has known your peace I've traveled far, still there is far to go Cause in my heart there is a longing To look upon your face Where you are is where I want to be you are